What's up, guys? It's uh, Painbot. You know, it's only been like a week, but it's felt like it's been longer than a week <laughs> just because of how everything's been playing out lately. But I'm still trucking on and I'm I'm still doing these because obviously I could do these from home and I don't have any intention of stopping these because I feel like it's the perfect thing to, keep, <laughs> to kill time with. So today I'm here with uh, Gora, who I haven't really talked with since, you know, Lunar Bout. And so that's like a good two months ago now, almost. Yeah. yeah, it's almost been two months now, huh? That's crazy. No, it's two hey, months. It feels just yesterday. Feels I know. Like, honestly, <laughs> like yesterday. All the memories are still vividly imprinted in my head. And, uh, oh, dude. <laughs> that was, it was an adventure for sure. Oh, man, that was a, that was a special time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's def it was definitely something. <laughs> honestly, it was like that that event was a bunch of unexpected things because i honestly had no idea i was gonna room with uh you and diddy and, and guzman you know i didn't yeah know, yeah, I yeah. That's gonna happen when did they tell you because they told me like a week before and uh, they're like hey we're gonna book you into with uh guzman and diddy and i was like oh all right cool so we're just throwing all the spanish speakers into one room all right i get it <laughs> <laughs> Figures like I thought I was gonna like share with maybe one other person. I didn't know we we're gonna like throw four dudes into a room, and yeah, I wasn't they... told that I wasn't told that you were gonna be in the room until like the day of. Yeah, and I was like, dude, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was so hilarious. I mean, you know, in hindsight, it was awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be roomed in with any other three dudes, but. Holy shit! Before I was like, dude, are you guys serious? No, I I, I was the same way. I was like, what the fuck are you thinking? And like, <laughs> we're gonna all try to kill each other. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was a that was good times. Good times. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Honestly, the um, it was the same deal on my side. They're just like, hey, we got a room, and then they were like, by the way, you're <laughs> we rooming with Gore. I'm like, uh, huh. <laughs> Like, well, so the guy that like low key called me out, yeah, like <laughs> and, unexpectedly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know this dude at all. I don't know if he has. Oh, yeah, no, I get it. Dude. <laughs> yeah, that was, whew. I mean, it all worked out, so you know, it's all good. Yeah, it was all good. <laughs> nothing, nothing bad happened, and we all ended up getting along just Shut fine. Up, nothing bad happened. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so let's not talk about that. Almost nothing bad. I know happened. <laughs> you already you already went over it on your video, right? Like, yeah, but we can talk about, about it again. Yeah. I mean, it's been no, a month. no, no. <laughs> it's over. Let's not talk about it anymore. That shit was that shit was rough. <laughs> Imagine having a perfect weekend, and then that guy shows up. <laughs> I know, right, dude? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Let's not talk about it. You're bringing the mood down. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, usually, um, I don't know anything about the guys I talk to, but I know mm -hmm. you. But we're gonna pretend I don't know you. So, okay. what's like, what's your fighting game background? Like, what did you start off with? What made you get into fighting games, and all, and what made you get to like into Sam Show? So, my just video game history, or as far as I can remember, I've been playing video games, dude. Cause I was raised in um, I, I I'm an only child, yeah. but I was raised. My mom was living with uh, my grandma and her sister. So she, and then her sister had two sons that were super into Street Fighter, and they were you know significantly older than me. So whenever they'd be like, hey, my mom had to go out. She'd be like, hey, take care of the kid. They'd sit me on their lap and then fucking hand me the, you know, the unplugged controller, that old school shit. Yeah. Well, like, like they went at it as Street Fighters. So like my entire life, I've been watching video games or like having them in my hand. So as so Street Fighter 2 was my first introduction to fighting games. And dude, I, I was in. Um, on it, obviously, I play like the beginner friendly characters, like Blanca, you know, just mash some buttons, get this fucking electricity out because I'm doing something <laughs> on screen. Yeah, and it, yeah. it looked cool. Like, I can do something. <laughs> so, you know, I play Blanca, I play, um, play Chun Li, do kicks all day, you know, the spam buttons, Zangief doing uh, the turnaround shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the green but, hand or uh, whatever. Yeah, oh, you yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Um, you talking about when he lariats? No, oh, lariat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just lariat all day because it was just fucking you know just mash buttons and you get a lariat out. <laughs> So those are my characters, like, growing up. And I was, what, like, five at the time, six? Uh, I was a kid. So that was, like, my first experience in the fighting games, like, just mad, being a little kid. Um, and then as far as Sam Show goes, there were there was a video rental spot a few blocks from my street, and they had a Neo Geo machine. And in the Neo Geo machines, or I, there was, like, three or four around, like, a city block from where I live. And uh, on this particular one, we had the obvious uh, Metal Slug. I think it was two. Metal Slug 2. Then we had a KOF. I think it was always 98. No, was it? No, 97. It was either 96 or 97. We didn't get the cool 98. So it was like 96 or 97, which I ignored because, you know, I need the characters. That was cool, but like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Um, it was uh, a soccer game. Every goddamn Neo Geo in the vicinity had this soccer game. I have no <laughs> idea what the hell it's called. And there was always dudes going at it at this damn soccer game. They were going hard on that shit. I never played that once. But I can, I vividly remember that opening screen. Like, oh, if I see it, nostalgia immediately. <laughs> and then the, the last game on this cabinet was uh, Stamp Show 1. And so every time I'd go to this arcade or rather video fucking store, I'd be in the quarters for Sam show while like my family members picked out whatever the hell movie we're going to watch that night. And it was special, dude, just because that and that for a button masher like me when I was a kid, just having a button that like deals a fourth of someone's health and just being able to spam it and watching just the blood fly. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, yeah, Sam Show. So Sam Show holds a, like a really special place in my heart as far as like really a uh, young adolescent me, like getting into fighting games. Like, yeah, dude, <laughs> Sam Show's, Sam, Sam Show's special. And it's like, I didn't, yeah. Or, it's kind of crazy. Like, um, you're the first person I've talked to who actually played Sam Show back in the day at all. <laughs> Not oh, like, really? Not even competitively, just at all. Like, just like, hey, I played Sam Show when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I've never heard no one, period, has said that to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I fucking love it, dude. Uh, I was a, I was a Hall main, and by Hall main, I mean Stan C main. <laughs> like, 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 that's, uh, I love that button. And then my cousins would come over, and then they were again on players, and so. They like they know how to play the game, so they destroy me and shit. So that's why I have this like I want Genon back, like really bad. Your revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I need this character in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's my history with Sam Show. I didn't. I never played a Sam Show competitively. It was always casual. I didn't really get into. I didn't learn how to play fighting games until years later where i was still a kid and something called cbs2 oh, po God. came out on the gamecube <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the version no one wants to play <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 all right look i wasn't good at fighting games yet all right so, and i didn't i didn't know how to do the inputs my cousin's like dude just you know quarter circle forward and that's all you gotta do is like no my fingers are stupid they don't know how to do it i'm sorry <laughs> And that game had the option where, like, you can do skills off the C-Stick. Like, you just, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the Smash Brothers now where you just tilt the C-Stick in a direction. And then you can do you can do a charge move just flicking the stick up. And then you have, like, Terry do a rising tackle or whatever. And so that was the first time where I felt like I was in control of my character rather than just pressing button. And it's interesting to say because, like, that game in hindsight sucks ass. Not CVS two that specific version. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it was just it was like badly ported. It was it was trash compared to like you know what you'd experience on the Dreamcast version or on the actual arcade. So, you know, it's it's interesting to me. Like that game for me was like it. Like oh man, I was so into CVS two <laughs> specifically that version because I could play it. And then so after that, I was like, all right, I need to get good at fighting games. And then I practiced how to do the motions. And then I didn't really understand the technicalities of fighting games like zoning, what you had to do until a game called uh, Street Fighter 4 came out in 2009. Mm. And like that's when I started paying attention to the, you know, the pro, the pro scene, quote unquote. 
um, where people competitively take this seriously. And I was like, whoa, this is nuts, dude. Like the things these guys are doing, they have one frame links doing consistently in tournament pressure, like the clutch. Oh my God. So that's when I was like, I need to, I need to get into this. But I played Vega and then I only ever played online. <laughs> I played Vega too. <laughs> so, no, oh, dude. He was so, so bad in vanilla. Uh, Damn, he was trash. Uh, oh my god. Worse dude. than Dan. This Dan had <laughs> combos. Dude. Fucking Vega, like he couldn't even do light punch, light. Yeah. He couldn't even do light punch, medium punch, EX Barcelona, uh, EX Zuda drop in that version. That's I how know, trash dude. he was. He never had block strings in that game. Like if you try to block string anyone, they could just DP through it. Oh, yep. dude, it was fucking rough. <laughs> And, and so I never went to a locals. I like um, Super Arcade was nearby, but I was always like scared because I was getting bodied online because people would just DP through my shit. And so I never went and I, was, I regret it. I should have gone. I, I would have like, gotten better at least. But uh, yeah, so that's I understood what, you know, I learned all the fundamentals from Street Fighter 4. I was like, I, I understand frame data. I know what it means. I know how to zone all that. But playing a character that just doesn't work online, online, it's not good, man. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not a good time. Uh, and then yeah, now we're caught up. So like now, I played. I tried Street Fighter Five, and then I got angry at Capcom and I dropped it because <laughs> it was like just patch <laughs> after patch of nerfing Vega. <laughs> for no reason like this dude is mid-tier as hell and they're like yeah he needs a nerf <laughs> like dude are you fucking oh it was when they nerfed izuna the not izuna drop they nerfed the wall dive like the the rate at which vega drops yeah and just combos just didn't work anymore like you'd hit the confirm and they'd be too high in the air or you wouldn't fall fast enough to catch them so oh my god dude i was i was done i just i haven't played that game since i can't stand it it's it's, it's funny because like when that game came out i looked at vega and i was like i ain't doing this shit again <laughs> and then i picked alex and then he got nerfed for no reason twice <laughs> i was like well capcom it was nice knowing y'all but i'm out <laughs> I, I, dude i don't know what the hell the balance team was thinking with that game oh god uh all right, as far as Vega's design, I get wanting to split the character between offense and defense, because that's how you were supposed to play Vega, but they never said that. He was a hit and run character where you could go in, put pressure, and then whenever you wanted to, you can just turtle up. And so now they made it more obvious with this stance switch system, where it's like, oh, the claw version's obviously more defensive to keep out, and then when you're unclawed, you now have better close range buttons and you can just go in. So I get it. Like, all right, cool. That's that's awesome. But how does it work in game? It doesn't because Birdie outranges you with the fucking stand game. <laughs> and Claw. Like, all right, fucking sick. So the one thing Vega's supposed to be good at, he's not even the best at. Oh, great. That's awesome. Sweet. And then the game turned into V-Trigger mode where it's like, oh, V-Trigger is the start of the match. And I, I get a, a flower toss that puts me on the other side of the screen sick. <laughs> like, all right. I, I'm done with this game, dude. And so I dropped it, and I'm so happy that Sam Show 7 came out, and that's where we are now. Because that game plays... <laughs> that game not only plays, but it looks like it should have released in 2009. <laughs> I know, <laughs> dude. But I think that's why I love it so much, because it, it plays so good. Oh, my God. The neutral, the mind games, it's all there without dumbing anything down and making you feel like it's simple, but it's crazy in depth. That, yeah, that's the mark of a really great fighting game in my opinion. I just wish SNK wasn't in a spot where they were playing catch up. You know, they were having all that tough time earlier on where like they were just irrelevant. And now that they're back in the limelight, they're playing a, like a generation behind of where everyone else is at yeah and that's that's what saddens me about it because this game is great it's so good it's just it's it's stuck in the last gen dude no you're right yeah. the game <laughs> options are like street fighter 4 when it got released almost mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. like when i see this game i see street fighter 4 on release and yeah i mean for better or for worse it's a good game like 4 but 
the issue is is that is not 2009. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need like more ability to do things. I will say this: that at the very least, the recording function in the training mode is better than Street Fighter Four and Five. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, by I now, I I would think it's be mandatory, or at least no, they would know to give us frame data, hurt boxes, and training mode, and everything else. Right, and that's what why I say it's like they're stuck in last gen. They, they didn't improve anything on the fighting game formula where. You see other games do crazy stuff like dude why don't we have this and i think that's why we had such a crazy amount of dropout for sam show yeah so yeah all right so all right I'll, I'll talk about it now i guess so there's i have a few pet peeves with the general consensus of people having ideas of uh, sam show mm -hmm. and my number one most hated one is this game is good for beginners I hate that one because I don't <laughs> I don't agree with it at all. I don't think this game is a good like I would never hand this game to someone who had never played fighting games in their life. The the reason being is it has nothing of substance for someone who is mashing buttons or doesn't know what neutral is. Because to practice neutral, you need to play against someone. And this game has awful online. So you yeah, can't yeah. do that, right? You can't do that. So a casual player, someone who's new to fighting games, the thing they go to is like, let me do combos because combos are cool. And if I do it, I have this sense of satisfaction. This game doesn't have a crazy amount of combos. You know, you can probably get it down within an hour or two if you're like new to fighting games. And then there's nothing for you to do in this game after that. Like this game does not teach you how to play neutral. So you go online and you get bodied and you're confused on what you did wrong. Because you're probably landing combos, because this game's openings are pretty... I mean, you can punish things relatively easily. But you don't know what you're, why you're losing. Why this guy's just jumping in on you. Like, how do you get through this Hanzo fireball? Stuff like that. And this game doesn't have a way to really explain that. And the online doesn't reinforce that. So outside of going to a locals and having someone sit you down, like, you need to learn how to zone. You need to learn how to pick your spots. You need to learn how to you know pick your buttons at this specific situation you're you're lost and then people just like new players would just drop the game like there's nothing there for them dude it's really hard to um i will say it's very difficult for newer players to get positive feedback so correct positive feedback in this game because yeah. the only positive feedback you get in this game is for landing like a heavy and ESA <laughs> or SSM, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what happens is that a lot of players either just throw out heavy, raw ESA or burst or SSM, and then when it don't work, they don't know what else to do. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah, that's it. and and then you you'll drop the game. Like, yeah, that's it. Like you think because that does a crazy amount of damage and it doesn't work. And then for the other opponent that has a stronger or more solid neutral game, they know how to land it and they'll get it all the time. And you'll get frustrated because you're you're eating 75 percent all the time because you're just hitting buttons. Like, you don't know how to just defend. Yeah. You know, and so this game punishes stuff like that. So that's why I think. It's not a great game for a beginner if they're going at it alone without someone over uh, just watching them over and guiding them through it. Like I think if someone were to pick up uh, Street Fighter, they pick up Power Rangers, they pick up any other game where it has like you can do combos in the lab, like you can actually lab stuff out. Like they'll have more fun doing that and playing online and getting somewhere with it than going to this game where every one of their mistakes gets blown up for fifty percent yeah by, by someone who knows what they're doing like that is just it's so demoralizing for a new player also come back yeah. <laughs> i mean making a comeback in this game without like rage is very hard oh yeah. especially if you're very obvious you die even faster it's not like yeah, five yeah. or like these other fighters were like inherently the um the mechanic <laughs> can do insane amount of damage on block or on hit because mm -hmm. the pressure you get off of on block is still good, and then if it hits, you win. <laughs> yeah, no. So like yeah, Sancho's yeah. like, hey, uh, if you do this weapon flip, you lose automatically if you don't hit. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, and specifically, Street Fighter Five put in the crush counter system, which wants you to press heavies at the long range to fish for a counter hit, 
Rashid. <laughs> you know, you just throw like <laughs> roundhouse all day and you land that counter hit and then you go into a crazy combo. So someone in that game, you know, like, oh yeah, this is how I play neutral. I just, you know, toss buttons until something clicks and then I go into my combo. And then in Sam show, you try to do the same and you get weapon deflected, you lose your weapon and you have no idea what to do at that point. Because you don't have a solid neutral game. You don't have a plan of what to do in this situation. You just know how to hit butt, you know? And obviously, I'm, like, dumbing down Street Fighter Five way too much. It's not that brain dead, kind of. I mean, well, it, it, it's easier <laughs> to keep people around when um, you have much easier to grasp positive feedback and tools are much more straightforward. And also, mm. the opponent, also the... Um, the, the, it, like for beginners anyway obviously this is not high level talk but like just to keep people yeah. around it's really hard for you to in the beginner level to waste a V trigger in a way that didn't at least let you get in or put pressure in some kind of way mm, and leave you advantages uh, yeah. so you yeah, know this yeah. it's just about positive feedback obviously I love Sam show because when you do the right thing it's like the ultimate right thing and it's awesome yeah. And yeah, it's exactly. usually because you knew what the opponent was going to do because you trained them, right? Mm -hmm. But, yep. you know, I mean, to get to that point, though, you have to at least become an adept player. Yeah, you need to you need to already have a fighting game background. You know, you need to already know what neutral is, what footsies are, what it means to be plus on blog, what it means to be negative. And so I think Sam Show is a great game if you're already into the scene. You're already acclimated to all the fighting game lingo, know how to pull off movements. Then this is a great game for you. You'll love it, and you'll train your neutral, and you'll be better. You'll be an overall better player going into any other game. But if you don't have any background whatsoever, uh, I I don't I can't recommend it. I yeah, it's know. hard. <laughs> I, I can barely. I never recommend Sam Show to players who um aren't already fighting game players because. There's nothing there for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, it's so sad. And so in comparison, like, okay, so who got it right? I think Tekken, like the latest thing they did where they have a training room that goes over your replays for you is fucking amazing. That is crazy good tool that I want to see in a lot more fighting games. That, but that took like Oh, yeah. five years in the development of that game <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. but I'm glad we're finally I'm glad that's finally on the table like I don't care if every other fighting game steals it and like you know whatever give Tekken the credit for actually doing it whatever but that is such a crazy important tool where you no longer have to have someone who's better at the game to, uh, than you to tell you what you're doing wrong and show you how to improve the game itself tells you you see the the replay and then you're blocking something like you you should have done this dude like this is a way more better optimal punish like why don't you do that and then it just goes on to the replay shows you where what, what you got opened up by if it was real if it was fake that is such a crazy good tool and i wish it was in more fighting games. yeah for I sure i really do oh uh, that I mean, is uh, there's a yeah. lot of things in fighting games that some companies do and some don't and you think it'd be obvious like uh rollback net code i mean just <laughs> let's talk yeah. about you know you know it's funny while i was talking to you and starting this up arxis posted as i was talking to you that guilty gear rev uh not rev guilty strive. gear um yeah strive will have rollback net code yes dude yeah. <laughs> oh my god thank you and it's funny because i was talking to um you know i was i talked i i've been talking around and like trying to find out like how important rollback netcode is to certain people and obviously some people don't that are newer or don't aren't like hardcore fighting game players just don't give a fuck but <laughs> that reaction you gave it should be enough to let anyone know that it's a big fucking deal to people who it's actually a give a shit deal. I mean, <laughs> just look at this. I mean, look, man, Sam Show. I love this game to death, man. But god damn, dude. Like, okay, so since the virus is like a pandemic right now, I can't do Casa the Sam Show, which is a local. Right. But I'm gonna do online. I'm fucking dreading it, and it's local. <laughs> it's only gonna be Georgia. I'm still dreading it, and that's, if that says anything, it's bad. It's yeah. fucking bad. <laughs> The, the funny thing is, this game specifically has the strangest netcode. 
because I have played players from Japan and France with a solid connection, like maybe a five frame delay, five to like four frame delay, which is impressive going all the way like across the world like that. And then I play Andy OCR, which lives like two cities down, like, you know, just a few minutes away from me. And it's the most awful choppy shit ever, man. I just don't get it. I don't understand how this netcode works. Because other netcodes, it's like, if you're close by, it'll work. Not this one. It's <laughs> funny because I try to play... Um, uh, I try to play... Aru. Mm -hmm. And he's same coast as me. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Fucking <laughs> awful. Try to play Andy? Shit was smooth once. I watched bass play Andy. Shit was smooth once. I try to play Jimmy Bones. He's in fucking Canada. This shit was smooth as butter. Aru? That shit was trash. And then I try to like <laughs> play um someone from Florida. That shit was awful. And I'm just like, these guys are close. What the fuck is happening? Like, why does it work like this? I know. I don't get it. What the hell? It just the Neko just doesn't work. It well, it works. It just doesn't work in the way you think it works. Where your locals are gonna be smooth as hell, and then you know people further away, obviously, are gonna be worse. It's the opposite. It's flipped around for whatever reason. Where it's like the further they are, the better the connection you have to them. It, oh, what the hell? I don't get it. it. It's strange. They need to fix it, and that's why you know rollback Neko has come in and save us. Hopefully. But the funny part about rollback netcode is as much as I know no, uh, rollback netcode is necessary, when delay-based netcode works, it's amazing. It's so good. It just doesn't work. And not when you have, you're connecting to someone across the country where no rollback netcode works. So you have this weird situation where delay-based netcode works when you're playing locally and not far away, and rollback netcode functions at all time. Yeah. And I, I think that's what we really want. We just need something to be consistent. Yeah. You know, it, it's really infuriating when something is inconsistent. I mean, when I played uh, a, a Rue yeah. on Vi Special, that shit was smooth. No problems. Mm -hmm. It's just seven. Man, that shit it just did not want to work. <laughs> I just don't know what it is, man. I love this game, by the way, guys. I'm not shitting on this game. It's just that like these are these are legitimate issues that need to be addressed because I mean I need to talk about it now because when the next version of Samurai Showdown comes out, I don't want them to pretend like they didn't know. <laughs> Alright, so now's my time to air out some feelings I have about SNK. <laughs> oh god. Alright, continue. <laughs> I love what they did for Sam Show. I think the team that worked on it are crazy talented and the love they have for the game is there. I think it's unfortunate that S alright, so this is um this is my personal bias. You know, my thoughts of looking at it as a consumer. I don't think SNK thought Sam Show was going to be anywhere near as successful as it is. I think they wanted to test the waters and revive the IP. I think they released the first set of DLC free just because they had no faith that this game was going to sell. Like, no one knows the Sam Show name anymore. It's kind of gone in the water. We haven't done anything since 5 Special, or I guess. I'll, I'll keep it at that. We won't talk about six. <laughs> well, they, we haven't done anything since five. We haven't talked. We haven't done anything since five special. No one really cares about the franchise anymore. So how do we get people to buy the game? Like, oh, I know. Let's release the whole first season of DLC free. Like, no other fighting game does that because they need to make money off of it to continue and support the game. And the game releases, and it's a hit. And Evo gets a crazy amount of entrance for the first year. And then everything just collapsed. And it's like, what the hell happened? I think, uh, especially now, any, most resources are being poured into KOF. Mm. They're, they're flagship series, right? Yeah. So I, honestly, I don't have any hope of anything beyond season two. Now, I, I'd love SNK to prove me wrong. Don't get me wrong, but I think anything like we all this talk of like let's get rollback netcode, like let's get all this. That's not they're happening. Yeah, yeah, they're listening to us. It's just gonna be in KOF. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the, the thing that they need to make happen and they know it'll sell. It's not a crazy risk like Sam show where it's like, is this community even still active? Is there still anyone going to buy this? They know people are going to buy KOF and, and people are. And so it's an easier, uh, what call it, gamble to take on that than it is to continue um, putting out stuff for Sam show. So I think which is we sad. Might, yeah, because this, um, this game sad. is fucking yeah. gross. <laughs> I, oh, dude, it's great. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they're running a skeleton crew to like get this these last season two characters out in the patch. Yeah, but like that skeleton crew that's working on it is fucking talented as fucking amazing, and they have like a true love for the game. <laughs> you know, so I can believe that. So like, thank you guys that are still working on it. We appreciate you, but. We also get that like SNK is currently moving on to the next thing. They're they're pulling an NRS on us, you know. <laughs> it's like we're fucking injustice and Mortal Kombat is just in the horizon. And like, all right, we're getting pushed aside. I get it, which is sad because I 100% prefer this game. It's a completely different beast. But at the same time, they have to be looking at it as a company. And the financial investment is just not there for Sam Show right now. No, there's no way. The player base is like dwindled a lot because of online, yeah. by the way. And, yeah. you know, if they want to revive the game, if they want to try it again, which I think it will do even better again, because now we have like an actual fan base that exists for real. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys that have been watching Samurai Showdown for a long time or whatever, or like were fans of the game, I, I understand y'all exist. But not in the numbers that exist now. This this game made a lot of people that never played Samurai Showdown fans. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, hopefully they take what we said about everything and the next game, you know, works better for fighting games. You know, the fighting game like community as a whole. If they could just give us honest, I think I told uh, Crispy, I was like, look. If you just gave us rollback and like a functional training mode, almost everyone who's a hardcore player will not even say shit to you anymore. Because <laughs> what can we ask for at that point? Just more. We would just ask for characters then. But yeah, I mean, we're not going to complain if we have a good net code and, and a training mode. That's all we give a fuck about. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told it's really easy. Yeah. Like, just, if you just make those two things, you have satisfied the hardcore fan bases. Then. You can focus on pleasing these fucking guys that just buy the game for aesthetics or whatever. <laughs> and we tell them that, and then they're like, "Yeah, we hear you are." You know, KOF team, do you listen? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so, like, that I honestly think anything we ask of them right now is is gonna be put on KOF. Hopefully, if they're actually listening, like anything we tell them, it's gonna go on to KOF. I'll play that game. I don't know if I'll take it competitively just because it's a whole different beast. But I do hope going forward that there's a standard put. I think, I hope this Sam Show 7 is going to be the last like 09 fighting game where it's like bare bones. Like, yeah, you get, I don't, what, you get what you need and like, that's about it. This better be the last fighting game I see from SNK where they're like, whoops. Like, <laughs> that's, that's this has to end. I, I want all fighting game fucking... Apparently, Arxis is finally... We got Arxis straight. We're good now. What else can we ask for Arxis? Arxis is perfect now. Because they have these beautiful games. They have fucking a rollback net code. Their fucking lobby system is a phenomenal. Mm -hmm. What do you want? It ain't shit else you could ask for. You At this point, you either like their game or you just don't like the fighting game. But yeah. you can't <laughs> yeah. ask them for like anything else at this point. Because, I mean, shit, what else is there to do? But <laughs> SNK... We need a lot of shit out of them. We need like a lobby system that isn't ugly and makes sense. We need multiple, be able to play multiple games at the same. Like I want like the Power Rangers thing where like or or the Guilty Gear thing where they have like a lobby and four people can run matches at the same time. You know that thing that was in KOF, yeah. fucking fourteen, <laughs> but not in this one for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, so yeah. weird. I, 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 I mean, come on. Like, that's the same <laughs> company. Why would you not just bring that exact thing over? <laughs> but, oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, they, they got to work on that. I don't know how we don't got costumes. <laughs> like, why don't we have 3D oh, costumes? 
why is that even why is three why does those ugly ass three costumes even region locked like i don't even yeah. understand the concept dude it's so crazy to me because this is a company that releases skins like kof 14 i think it's where it's at right now 15 i'm not sure i think it's at 14 right now kof 14 has skins they have like what four skins for nakaruda or some shit we, we don't have one yeah we don't have a single <laughs> one Fuck. But I will say this: Nakaru in this game looks a hundred times better than Nakaru in KOF. Okay, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so it's probably more expensive to make actual outfits. But I mean, and, and we're, we're probably we not gonna get shit. I'll be honest with you: we ain't getting shit because yeah. KOF is was announced directly after a year after this game, right? So it's like I know they don't have money, man. This is they they are not even close to as big as Capcom. Arxis, mm. they're not, they're like the tiniest fighting game developer that is not an indie. If they, mm -hmm. They're like, they're literally, they're literally like, <laughs> they're not indie, but it almost might as well be almost. <laughs> yeah, which is so crazy because their marketing, uh, marketing team really knocked it out of the park, reviving the SNK brand, like just tossing their characters into every other fighting game. Yeah. You know? Like, dude, that was so insane seeing Terry into Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, holy crap, how did this character make it in? Yeah, we got Terry, we have Geese, that's the big motherfucker in the room. Fucking Geese and oh, Tekken. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> he fucked that's that game up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, their marketing team was on it. Unfortunately, the actual development, uh, development department of SNK just doesn't have the funds to keep up of where fighting games are now or they're not they didn't invest it up but it's it's a shame yeah hopefully kof is a big hit and they get like crazy rich off of it hopefully i hope and so we can, and we can see you know some of this stuff that we're asking for get implemented day one instead of being a patch later on yeah i mean i'm a big fan of snk characters they're all really neat they're cool oh, yeah it's just, I mean, you know, this is the games they make. <laughs> I feel like I'm buying the same games I've been buying when I was like 12. Like, yeah, yep. Like mm -hmm. KOF 14 functionally feels almost identical to KOF 2003. <laughs> so I feel like that's an issue. I mean, and, and the netcode is the same, right? It's delay based. So it's the same yeah. as the old KOF netcode. Yeah, oh, yeah. so we can't even, yeah, we can't even look forward like, oh, maybe the next KO is going to have good Neko. Nah, we lost faith. Yeah, Four we, games they ago. have to show us. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. if I were them, I would like, like, when they do big reveal for KOF 14, I mean, five, 15, they have to, like, let us know. That I, I I can, the, I think the best thing I can picture is that KOF 15, they do a trailer, and then, like, in the beginning, in the intro, where they do, like, the uh, opening credits, Somewhere in there, I see Code Mystics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole room would erupt. It's <laughs> just like some crazy combo with like one frame links and shit, and then it's like all this played online. Like, oh shit! shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? You did that online? Oh shit! All right, maybe. <laughs> Man, that's the that's the happy start. Like, I hope that's what we get to see. Uh, what 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 we what the possibility is is. The worst case scenario which is we get 15 with 14's netcode bullshit mm. it looks better than 14 but i don't give a fuck about that i don't really give a shit about that at all i just want the damn internet to work and i just want the <laughs> fucking training mode not to be from 2004. that's it that's it oh my god i mean i i love this i love the characters and the fighting mechanics from snk it's just you know those you just got they gotta focus on the other stuff too. Obviously, yeah, presentation is important, and that's why uh, Samurai Showdown MV looks amazing. Yeah. But as MVCI has shown to prove, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure, that's definitely a good case for that. And Samurai yeah, Showdown's yeah. presentation as a fighting game is really good. Like the blood, the hit stop, all the mechanics look great. But yeah, it, looks good. it does yeah. no no fucking good if we can't fucking play each other, <laughs> right? like i mean we can play each other but it's not going to be fun or enjoyable it's funny just because this as simple as this game is it doesn't work online <laughs> you know it's like oh you just need to press one button to punish this like oh it doesn't work online so now this button became a frame trap 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, God forbid you're playing versus Shizu. His jumping is... You might as well just let him have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, you know, online you actually have... Or offline you have a chance to... Any air, it's like, no, this is just an unblockable now. Like, you just have to deal with it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's, it's... Yeah. Like, uh -huh. I played in um, the second Ronin Rumble. And uh -huh. that was the last one I ever played in. And <laughs> it was because <laughs> I was playing and I got to, like, top eight, I think. Mm. And... um. I was playing this guy named Luis Cha, and oh okay, yeah I know him. that fucking mm -hmm. dude. He ran up and threw me like six times, <laughs> and I was and, my, and I was getting really pissed because offline I dodge them shits all the time, and I'm like, yeah. fuck this fucking shit, man. What's the <laughs> point? Because now run up throw is gross because it's like I can't do anything about it. I'm Tam Tam or Charlotte or I don't remember who I was playing. I didn't want to hold up and be a scrub. I wanted to dodge yeah, and yeah. win. But that's the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just not an option to you. You just have to guess. Yep. Yep. This this game is completely different offline and online. It's crazy. Fucking it's funny. Dumb, it's man. that that's so similar to my experience in Ronin Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we're not shitting on Ronin Rumble. Ronin Rumble no, is amazing. No. And yeah, it's yeah. a it really is a really magical thing that exists because it just shows how much we love the game because everyone is willing to put up with all this trash just to play. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. That, yeah. We, there's no way those guys would endure that trash outside of just their pure love for the game. So if anything, it's a, it's a, it highlights how much we love Samurai Showdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Jeff for setting that up weekly. You know, having a prize for these players that are coming out, and just for the players that, yeah, that are willing to endure online. Because you know, after my first Road and Rumble, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do this again, which sucks. Because I want to, you know, support the community, but just the online, man. Like, damn because i got hit with like okay so the dude was doing like online how shit to me which i should have respected you know but i was playing that game like it was offline yeah where a dude when you're playing offline and you get recoiled off stuff you don't necessarily go for weapon to flex offline as much just because you know the person is ready with the correct punish and you're not going to get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, this dude was doing, like, you know, light DP, throwing weapon deflect behind it. <laughs> shit, like, shit, like, I would not expect a, a top-tier player to do offline. Like, he was doing it online. And because of the lag, my stuff was coming out late and I'd lose my weapon. And I was like, dude, I, I need to play this game differently. And that's so bad. You know, you, you don't want to learn two versions of the game at the same time you can't get good at one version and then go play at a local and expect to do just as well yeah That's, you have to constantly yeah. play both in order to like yeah. stay trained up yeah it's so crazy and now that we're having like this whole epidemic with the coronavirus we're and then you know i don't know if you've heard but the the west coast the uh, local or wnf we've went from a weekly to a monthly now and so Space and I have been running sets and it's been noticeable where we're playing a more online style of gameplay rather than offline. Like you'll see Space go a lot more aggressive and turn it up where if you see him offline, he'll never, he'll just sit there and just wait for the timer to run out and win that way. And we're like, dude, we need offline back. Like this is not the way to practice. And we're both like, if we win the tournaments right now, we'd get washed <laughs> for like free because <laughs> we don't have the offline experience right now where we're keeping up the pace with everybody else. And I'm like, dude, I agree. Like we're playing really stupid and it's because the net code is so bad, but this is the only practice we're getting. It's a, a, online is both the best and the worst thing to happen to fighting games <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> it's oh God, man. I'm blessed. I, I know I've told everybody this, but I'm blessed because, you know, Bates lives here and my other roommate, Izzy Maru, who lives here. So I get all the offline I need. But I know I do not touch Samurai Showdown online. I, th th coming <laughs> two weeks from now, I'm doing Cost of the Sam Show Online Edition. That'll be the first time I've played online in like fucking months. Well, maybe I think I played before. I think I played Bates online. And it was because we were doing like a fucking, we were doing like a first to five for this guy's stream, but it was like one frame delay because we live in the same house. <laughs> so I don't count that. <laughs> but 
for the most part, I haven't touched online since since like the third month of the game. I'm still green belt. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know we're envious of you for sure. Anyone who has that access to offline play on a regular basis, I'm so jealous of you, dude. So jealous. And you know those players are the ones that are placing top eights <laughs> consistently. You know, I think Diddy was uh, staying with Romance for the while. Diddy's the best Sanfield player in the U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's, he's gonna stay that way because we have no tournaments for like six months. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna have to hold that shit. Coronavirus is out there protecting his W's. I mean, we like, <laughs> yeah, we, we can't contest that shit. So, but yeah, it's like just having this offline pra like practicing the game offline consistently is what's gonna get you better but you know most people just go from online to like oh let me go to my major and then like oh this game is way different and i'm not even playing like none of my stuff works offline and it's it's so sad seeing players play it online and think that's how the game functions offline yeah like, it's like like the cheap stuff that works online is like oh it's so cheap nerf it like no dude you can just block it offline and get an ssm <laughs> you know this yeah it sucks like it sucks. It so sucks. But you know, you'll have players calling for nerfs, calling uh, characters like ass, where it, the character only works offline, and like you just you, you know, this doesn't work online. It, yeah, it's it's strange. it's strange. I remember um, I watched Space Detective play versus uh, Bates because I guess I guess um, Bates had played mm. someone else. I think he played Chef Raptor. Yeah, I heard they were both hesitant to run it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's all I and he played space, and then afterwards, like space won, and then base is like, man, I could have deflected half of that shit offline. He's like, space, like, yeah, this is character online is way better. <laughs> oh yeah, for he's sure. He's playing Basara. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basara is a way better character online than offline, for sure. F5C is, is insane cool. online. Like, offline is whatever, but online, that shit is absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. Offline, I mean, all right. I don't know if you want to talk about that character real quick. No, we can't. Character... We can talk about whatever we want, man. That's the whole thing. Okay. All right, we'll talk about Basar for a bit. So when that character initially came out, I thought he was going to be low tier. I thought he was going to be complete ass. And the character came out, and then I played. Space was gonna like, oh, this is my character, you know, I want to switch to him. And like, all right, so we're playing at the locals, and then we played like a hundred matches, and I won like eighty of them, <laughs> you know, because because I, I was like, Yoshi shits on Basara, like it's not even funny. It's like Yoshi just wins that matchup clean. And then I was like, this character just doesn't work for the game. You're, the risk reward is there, kind of, but this character, like losing his weapon off every deflect is just bad. Like you are never, Basra can never open up a character willingly. And I told that to Space and I'm like, the only way you'll get anyone to hit your, or run into your buttons is if you annoy them enough. And like you need to annoy with the light slash like just annoy them to want to get to run into you yeah, yeah. And like that's the only way anyone will ever get hit by 5c like that button looks amazing it does a crazy amount of damage but a good player is never gonna run at a bossera because they know that button exists yeah like, they'll just they'll just hang back and then we started playing that style where we'll we started playing and I told him to run that style and it did get a little bit more evened out when we started playing that matchup. But understand that space was using only light slash and light kick for 40 seconds of a round. <laughs> you know, like he would not <laughs> press any other button other than light slash and light kick for a clean 40 seconds of a round before 5C even be came into the picture and that's how you have to play that character to make that character work and so we're like okay it's working now but it's working on a long set where i'm getting frustrated towards the end of the set yeah you know but at the beginning of the set i'm you know looking for everything i'm like super on it like i see a 5c deflect or sabaki through it punish so how do you play this character in a tournament setting where you only have two matches to get them to do what you want 
Like, how do you condition someone in two rounds? Like, that's a tall order for anybody. Yeah, you have to be like a real master. <laughs> or the other player just like cracks really quickly. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so I told Space, like, this character works. Like, he's not low tier. I don't, you know, I don't think he's low tier. But as far as a tournament viable character, you're going to have to play him against players that crack easy or get frustrated really fast. That's the only time this character will work. And that's why you'll see him play Bossra against Diddy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have played Diddy before, but Diddy gets frustrated really quickly. I like, wanted honestly, to play him with my Tam Tam. <laughs> oh, dude, Diddy gets frustrated. It's so hilarious. Because when I first played Diddy, he wasn't really uh, respecting my jump C a lot. And then you could hear it. Like, I was playing him, like... <laughs> <laughs> like getting super frustrated like not annihilating my shit so that's why you see diddy just like and that's why she's such a perfect character for that dude because none of that frustration affects diddy when he's playing shizu because he knows that he can steal it all back with one tap and he's a really good player where he knows where it'll land like he lets go of tap it's gonna land period you know he knows exactly where to place it yeah so diddy's frustration is out the window now it's not even a problem because he's always calm now because he knows he can just rob the ground back yeah so i think that's why diddy being as good of a player as he is and then shizu covering that frustration that sometimes will tilt it to the other player's favor is gone it's such a great pairing like those two and that's why you see them uh consistently winning tournaments not even top eight he's winning them all dude <laughs> you know yeah 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 it's such a great like pairing of characters and I, i'm interested to see what sk is going to do to balance shizu out and if they're going to give him the gendro treatment or if they're really just gonna like you know like oh we should just touch his jump c because it's coming out too fast or man tap coming out or level four tap being charged in 13 seconds is a little bit it's a little too fast which it is you know or, <laughs> yeah you know goddamn fucking 13 seconds that's it he has a little four that's that's insane that's insane that, that character is definitely out of control but that character coupled with the knowledge that diddy has puts it on another level that you don't see any other shizu being able to do at the same time yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my feelings on on shizu right now <laughs> i haven't um i've not played a very good shizu ever <laughs> really ever it, not even it, one i've never played a really good cheesy no not even way once. and it's pretty i haven't got the experience of the frustration i've beaten every cheese i've come across mm -hmm. and i can't tell it's because my character like frustrates them oh i was talking about scrub because i talked to scrub we're not really talking we're just messages because i thought tam would have the advantage against the shizu mashup because tam might have an answer to float and then Scrub was telling me, like, yeah, no, Tam can't jump C float. I don't know if you feel the same way. Where he was saying, like, if if Shizu just jumps and sees, you can't react jump C into, like, Shizu's jump C is going to beat your jump C. You so can, I'm like, oh, okay, um, so, yeah. You, you can 2B it. Oh, you can 2. Will that beat out, like, both options clean? If he swings early and you do crouch, it'll whiff. And then you can 2B. If he swings late, really? okay. then you can J. It's a it's a mix. It's, you know how I treat you? It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know so how like, I, like, I could do 2B? Thing. Only if you did a certain jump and I could do five, JC. Only if you yeah, did yeah, a specific yeah. jump. It was like, yeah, yeah. it's like the same thing. And it's really fucking okay. stupid because he risks <laughs> nothing. And he like, does it. if you fuck it up, then you're dead. But the good news is, is that once you um, get weapon flip, then you hold him hostage for a little while at least. You know, he can't really do right. anything when you have weapon flip. I mean, I I haven't... <laughs> I quit Tam Tam. <laughs> oh, did you? No way. Yeah, I stopped playing what? Tam Tam for like two months now. Shut up. What the hell? <laughs> what are you playing now? I've been playing Ukyo. Oh, you would. <laughs> don't, don't let space hear that. <laughs> Damn it. I've been like playing Ukyo. My Ukyo is really good. I, my only problem is that I killed myself. Like at, at this That's, point, yeah. 
I literally just die to be, and it's really frustrating because uh, there'll be rounds I'll be winning, and then I'll get the wrong ghost slash, and I'll just fucking lose the whole round. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, Ukyo. All right. As much as people bitch about Ukyo, Ukyo is now free to play. Like you know, he's difficult. He's one of the more difficult characters to play in this game. And not because the techniques he does are hard to execute. It's getting the right read on the opponent and opening them up without relying on a gamble, on like a dice throw to win you the round. Yeah. Like that's, in my opinion, what makes Ukyo difficult. And that's why I think uh, Ghost is my favorite Ukyo player of all time. Especially after watching his match against Guzman <laughs> at Lunar Bout. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. This, so the way Ghost plays is if he's feeling himself, he'll just throw the fucking dice. And whatever it lands, it is what it is. And that Guzman match, if you guys haven't seen it, please go watch it at Lunar Bout. He threw the dice fucking like eight times in a row and hit lucky sevens every time. Like, it was so amazing to watch him just, like, go crazy and everything just work. And I was like, that is so good. I was so hyped watching him. And I'm like, this is great. I, oh, my God. I can't even express, like, how happy I was watching that shit work. I couldn't believe when I, I watched I, it. I was like, this dude <laughs> he got it right every time. I know. And you can argue, like, you know, he got the reads every time, like, he read Guzman, but there's a point where it's like, how do you guess the 50-50 wrong that many times in a row? Like, it was honestly just the fucking stars aligned for that dude at that moment. Yeah, for and sure. And everything was, was working. And I was like, yeah, he's easily my favorite <laughs> Ukyo to watch now. <laughs> like, like, that is so cool to see. Like, as much as I play with space and, all, and like, uh, respect his solid play, as far as a spectator, watching this something entertaining, like seeing a Ukyo player like Ghost just like, you know, turn on the fucking jet engines and run, like mow someone down. Like that is so crazy cool to watch. <laughs> I try to like develop my own, like my, my play style with Ukyo is different from space and is from, different from, uh, Ghost. from uh, Ghost. The way I play it, the way I decided Ukyo should be played anyway, is that I actually just use my presence <laughs> to get people to do what I want. Because unlike Tam Tam, mm. you can't just sit there forever <laughs> and block me. So right. I just, with Ukyo, I'll just pressure them with just my presence. And eventually people will just give me what I want, despite me standing where I want them. <laughs> so yeah, 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 I just yeah. do that. That's literally all I do. And then I'll sweep or I'll just do the Sabami Gaishi. Because eventually I'll just get a bead on what they want to do and run that shit and it mm -hmm. works on everyone except terrence terrence will just never give me what i want because he's an asshole <laughs> that, that's if you ever play diddy that's the same way you can't you don't condition him because he knows that you want to condition him to a certain way and he'll just like you know forcibly or in game give you a giant finger <laughs> and just dp whenever the hell he wants <laughs> it's like, Fine, all right i guess shit i'm sorry and that that's the scariest player to play against like the ones you can't condition the ones that you can't condition and still have a solid neutral are by far the scariest players i've ever played easily yeah, and diddy's uh, diddy's at the top of the list for sure <laughs> it's because you can't run your plan the exact yeah. way you want it or specifically for yoshitora i'll like I'll two C all day to try to get them to or to condition them to block low all day, so it opens Botan or opens like a, a like a cross up or that you know that's how you play Yoshi. You want to condition them so that way your other options open up. But when I play against Diddy, he'll just do shit and he'll like I know these this option answers these three options of Yoshi, so I'm just gonna do it whenever I feel like, and then it'll work for him, and then I get blown up. And then I'm back to like step one of conditioning Diddy. You know, like it just, oh my God, dude. <laughs> that Diddy is such a crazy good player to play against. I, I, I wish I, I played hope, him. Yeah, oh, really I nice. hope, I hope you get to play him before the Shizu nerfs hit. Cause then he'll probably switch his style. But yeah, playing Diddy right now is such an interesting, unique player to play. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if they nerf Shizu and he goes back to Gendro, 
I, <laughs> man, I would just cook that man alive. <laughs> <laughs> Not even gonna lie. <laughs> That's like that matchup is the one I know so well. I don't even. I don't think there's a single Gendro that can beat me. <laughs> he's told me that he's gonna stick with the character even after the nerf. So we'll see. Well, functionally, obviously, yeah. Shizu is functionally perfect. <laughs> like he is. He is. Fireball, <laughs> DP, tap, good jump attack, running cancelable medium, good weapon flip. I mean, having a float that just like, makes them irrelevant. Yeah. This is why I want, I want, I not necessarily want Meditate back, but I want another way to spend my meter. Specifically because some character, like Isen, like when, I, when I'm when i popped, there's, I can't Isen Shizu. <laughs> like, what do I do? I, you know, Yoshi has options. I can actually like just run up DPM if he's just jumping to not get weapon flipped all day, or I can just go for the weapon flip. Because my weapon flip does more damage than a max bar Isen. So for me, when I pop, my plan is not to look for an Issa, it's to get a weapon flip. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So that's cool that this character has that option. But you go to a character like Ukyo or Jubei, where their weapon flips are irrelevant at all points of the match, and then they don't have Issa when they pop against Shizu, it's even that much more in Shizu's favor where you're taking away more tools from this character while you keep these tools and they have to be afraid of it. Yeah. And so I want, I would really love to see a new mechanic that uses meter in a different way where those characters that suffer from having a terrible weapon flip can now benefit from this new mechanic that lets them, you know, meditate and go into like that slow-mo combo and do like fucking auto combo or custom <laughs> combos. Like that'd be like, oh, that's cool. So now like, oh cool, I can just auto combo Shizu instead of trying to go for an Isen or a weapon flip, you know, something else, that'd be cool. In my opinion. I mean, <laughs> if we could slow down time and Shizu jump, we for sure would fuck his ass up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. He would not float down so safely. Your yeah, so would actually be fine because he jumps so fucking high. I don't even know if we could reach him before this time slow ran out. <laughs> so, yeah, like, so that would be a way to nerf Shizu indirectly without, you know, doing anything to his frame data or, like, making his buttons worse. Like, he'll still be the same character. But now that other characters have options to deal with his stuff, then he becomes fairer without having to do anything to the character. And that'd be an interesting way to see SNK balance that character. I don't think it'll happen. I it think won't. that they probably just gonna Gendro that kid. Yeah, honestly. probably. <laughs> I honestly but would be down with them. Um, if they just lowered the damage on Isen and instead we got the slowdown, then that'd be cool. I'd be down with that. There's something like that. Something I, I want like something. That. Yeah, something innovative, you know, something clever. Like, it's cool to see the numbers change, like frame data change, or have this move start up slower, whatever. That's that's nice and all, but it's very interesting to see when you give a new option to the player base that lets them do more stuff. That, yeah. Or I don't know if it's just like add a move. Like, yeah, give Yoshi backdash Boton, and he's just broken now. By the way, I don't know if you want to talk about Yoshi, but that character, if he gets buffed, he's top five. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even know that. Like, <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, everyone I play with are like, if they buff Yoshi or they leave him alone, he might jump into top five. Like, easy, clean. You convinced me <laughs> he wasn't, like, bad. So, like, I had a, I, we have, like, two Yoshi players down here. Mm, and by, by the way, I I tell them a hundred times. I'm, I show them how to do your bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you're fucking. You're, I'm like, you're thinking too hard. Just do this trash, and then you'll <laughs> you'll beat eighty percent of the players because this shit's hard to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, as soon as I show them, like they're like, I don't understand why this is so cheap. I'm like, and I'm like, you'll figure it out. Don't worry. And then afterwards, like, okay, this is kind of fucking stupid. <laughs> That's the thing with Yo. That's what makes him such a hard character to understand and play, and why the majority of the community is split on the verdict on that character, whether he's good or bad. He has way too many tools that just don't work in certain situations. It's sort of the whole Tekken kind of thing, where you have a move list of like 200 plus moves, but you need to filter all the like useless ones out and stick to the ones that work. 
because the moves that do work for Yoshi are low key kind of broken. <laughs> you know? Yeah, both like... on. Woo! <laughs> I never played someone that used both on as much as you, and I'm surprised they never used it like that. That shit was I gross. know, right? Dude, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that button gets in. That Bolton low key has too high of a vertical hitbox where it's catching characters jumping at at points where it shouldn't be hitting them. Because, you know, as a whip punish tool, I get it because people extend their hurt boxes when they use a long range poke. And then I just use Bolton to counter poke. So then Yoshi has a neutral game equal to whatever character he's playing against. So it doesn't matter whatever range the other character has, I have an answer for it. So that's cool. So don't necessarily get rid of the horizontal range. But the vertical range at where it's catching people jumping is a little ridiculous. And I don't think that button should be used in that particular way. It's probably not That's intentional. It. <laughs> it's just... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I th yeah, the way I see it, I think they just matched the hurt bot or the hitbox of Botan to match what the, the visual animation is. Yeah. But it, reach it reaches pretty high. It, it reaches so high to a point where Darley, Yoshi, and Charlotte cannot jump over Botan. It, it it actually reaches the apex of their jump. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, it's that fucking wild. Like, why is this button reaching so high up? That's kind of ridiculous. So if I... If no, Yoshi should get those nerfs. Whether he's going to get it, I don't know. Because the community has been very vocal that this character sucks. So he might just be getting buffs. And if he just gets buffs, he's in the top five in the cast. Easy. <laughs> like, because he doesn't need anything right now. He he works. He just need to play him correctly and he works you, like you can make any matchup viable for the most part ukio and charlotte are the hardest but even then if the charlotte or ukio doesn't know how yoshi works and as i said the majority of the community doesn't know how yoshi works like yoshi will win like free most of the time like when i played you like your experience first playing me in that first of five I almost won it, you know? <laughs> and, and, like, but it goes to show how a simple character like Tam Tam can adapt on the fly because the buttons that work for Tam Tam are pretty simple to get out quickly and counter Yoshi. And then it just shuts down Yoshi's game and then I have to play a lot more solid. And some of the casts are not that simple where you need to, you know, uh, have crazier better reactions you need a dp correctly but like yeah how are your experiences experiencing like a yoshi that actually like decently knows how this fucking character works i mean you were the first that was just like fuck <laughs> <laughs> hey i played a root a root knows what he's doing too but he didn't have the mix down so it was different right. it was easier to shut down because he didn't really have that mix like you did yeah it's Yoshi's mix is very um, condition heavy, where I will I will use the same option five times in a row just so it gets you to think like that's the only option Yoshi has. Where the reality is I have eight more on the side that I'm not using, but I'm like just holding back for the specific moment where I want to like just bring it out and use it. And it catches a lot of people because they don't know that Yoshi has a command grab because that no one uses and that the command grab recovers faster than regular grab. And then now I get a weapon to fly. Or that my 2A will catch a jumping opponent that tries to wake up jump, but it'll also cover like a DP check. It'll recover in time where I can block the DP and then go into SSM. Like stuff like that where, or 2C that's just safe on block because, you know, SNK is like, fuck it, just give him that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I found out like, damn, I can only crouch down that shit. What the fuck? <laughs> but you're lucky. Some characters go, don't get shit. Um, oh, you know what? I, I actually went another level on that. So now I can do a meaty 2C that's negative nine. And so you can't even crouch jab punish that anymore. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. So there's there's definitely more layers to that character than that people haven't delved into. And it's strange because when they get to that character, they think that they think Yoshi works in the same dimensions that like Howl works or Gendro works, where you pick him up for 20 minutes, you learn his combos, you get a gist of what the the, the button's supposed to do, and it's you're good to go. And then when you get to Yoshi, 
you find that his buttons suck. They have no range. They're out forever. They're easy weapon deflectable. They're not positive on block. And you're like, okay, this character is just straight trash. Like, no, nah, those buttons work. You just need to use them at the right spots. Yeah. It's, it's such a it's a, such an interesting character. And that's why I love playing him. Because he's crazy in depth. And you have to really think outside of the box to just get him viable. Like, just to get him playable. And then to get him to a tournament level, you need to take it to, a, like, another step. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm playing Yoshi. I just, you know, I love that character. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about him all day. <laughs> Thank God they nerfed that cross-up heavy. <laughs> Dude, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right, you just brought up a pet peeve of mine. Cross-up heavy nerf wasn't a nerf. <laughs> and uh. Here's why. So, a lot of people think that that patch butchered Yoshitora, right? Cross-up heavy was a gimmick, and any Yoshitora that complains about it sucks. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that button was a crutch. Like, that button was cheap. That button could recross you up in the middle of the, the four hits, so, you know, you had to block forward, and then block back on the next hit, and then block forward again on the next hit. That was super cheap. But that changed Yoshi's shallow jump a lot in the current patch. So now when you jump at that same cross-up range, you have the option to hit B and do an actual cross of the cross-up B, or you can hit C and it hits forward. It's a 50-50 on someone who is not anti-airing, period. Like, that's a, it's a 100% guess now. And it's a guess where you're guaranteed a combo whichever decision you choose. And if they block either one, now they have to take a mix because you're plus on block when you land. Like, I would take that any time of the day rather than a cross-up C. Because cross-up C, people were just throwing it out, and if it crossed them, cool, and then they might get the fucking combo at the end, who knows. But now that we have this option, it also opened up empty jump B. And now we get even more of a mix-up if it's like an empty jump, is it left or right? And now when Yoshi lands, they're fucking negative, and now they have to think a uh, higher low with 2C or Botan. Maybe it's a grab, do I jump out? If I jump out, Yoshi does a Cena Deshko and Annie airs me. It's a crazy mind game that you play with Yoshi if you don't Annie air. It's crazy in depth, and it catches a lot of people that don't understand how intense that mix-up is. And I think that's where the biggest misunderstanding on Yoshi is and why people grieve about Jump C so much. Like, they don't understand exactly what's happening other than I'm getting hit by shit that I probably shouldn't be. Like, no, nah, dude, you just get strong in the 50-50. <laughs> I don't know. And, and, and I guess what? I'm safe on the 50-50. So, you know, you just have to hold that. <laughs> like, is that why like, you hate um, Ukyo? Because he can anti you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ukyo doesn't have to play that game at all. Not only does Ukyo not have to play or the 50-50 game on jump-ins, I can't cross him up. He's too short. Oh, his stance is too short? Yeah, he has a hunchback, so my cross be whips. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck to do. Like, So he could just stand all day and he'll never get crossed up. Like, ever. <laughs> it's fucked up. So I can't do that. And then his 3K pushes me far away where I can't punish his 3K. So I don't have... So he can just 3K me all day and I have to hold it sort of like other characters have to hold my 2c all day you know so my but he can punish my 2c because he has a long enough button so when you play ukio and yoshi yoshi doesn't have a safe 50 50 game where ukio does mm. and that's what tilts the balance in ukio's favor where they're both sort of the same character at the neutral game they can both punish each other's stuff but once you get up close Ukyo has a button that Yoshi doesn't have an answer to, while Ukyo has an answer to all of Yoshi's stuff. And that's what puts the balance in Ukyo's favor. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's, that's how that That shit works sounds out. like it sucks. <laughs> uh, it, oh, it super sucks. It's it's the worst. It's almost as bad as Charlotte's. I think a good Ukyo player makes Yoshi's life a lot more difficult than Charlotte. But Charlotte has an easier time of keeping Yoshi out, where she can just jump back B, and Yoshi has zero options 
to deal with that button. And she ain't gonna fuck up either. Her shit's super easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just hold, just jump back, and then hit B. And that's it. <laughs> like, you, well, you, you beat Yoshi. Congratulations, you know, round of applause. Because <laughs> Yoshi doesn't have anything to deal with that. It's because Yoshi doesn't have a DP that's invincible throughout. You know, we lose our invincibility frame one that it's active. So that means the moment it's active, I can get hit, and then the angle that Charlotte's jump back B hits and how shallow her jump is puts it in a perfect spot where it hits me before my DP reaches her. So I can't DP her. It's also the perfect spot where it pokes my C to dash go. So I get smacked out of that too. So I'm like, I, I can't do anything. Like if she jumps back B, I literally just have to watch her do it and just sit back because I don't have an answer to it. it it's, it's really bad. <laughs> But uh, if they, yeah, if they ever mess, and then she has a DP that beats my jump in, so she doesn't have to deal with the jump in pressure at all. Um, her two B beats Botan because it's angled upwards, so I can't even, <laughs> so I can't even whiff punish Botan because it's clipping me out of the air. So I flip out and I'm like, okay, so I can't even do that. It's it's dude, yeah, no. Charlotte has an easier time of controlling Yoshi than Ukyo does. But when Ukyo does it correctly, it hurts more. And he ends the rounds faster than Charlotte does. So, yeah, that's those are the two characters that completely destroy Yoshi. Everything else is more or less evened out. And just those two are they're troublemakers, for sure. I've never, like, no. struggled versus Charlotte without playing Tam Tam. Now I'm playing Ukyo. Mm -hmm. That character, man, that is... Oh, I can't tell if she beats fucking Ukyo, but god damn, man. It's like really hard to beat her. And you can't really Tsubami Gaishi her out of the air because her jump arc is so short and she mm. sticks out that JB. It beats it half the time. It just beats it yep. sometimes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Charlotte. And it's funny because you'll see players like Lord Jimmy Bones. I don't want to say downplay the character. Because what they say is correct, you know, she does have issues, and the matchups she does suck in, she sucks in, like, hard. But against us that play, you know, characters where she has a good time in, like, that character is crazy oppressive. She doesn't really have a lot of flaws, and she can play her game against all the cast. You know, when I'm playing Yoshi, I can't jump in on the entirety of the cast. I have to play every matchup separately. Where Charlotte, like, I just need to poke all day. I, I can play the same matchup against the entirety of the cast. And I would say the, the biggest like thing that Charlotte has going for her, it's really hard to fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like yeah. I just don't ever get the opportunity to see someone fuck up. Like, if, if Charlotte fucks up, it's because she woke up DP. And that was a decision they made. Mm. They didn't fuck up an input. Do something bad. A lot of her things just don't have heavy repercussions outside of just being purely stupid. Like, I don't know, doing heavy bait in that lunge point blank or some shit. But, like, no one's going to do that. And that character yeah. just benefits hardcore in a tournament. Like, in a tournament, she's super good in a tournament because tournament ain't nothing but try not to fuck up. So, like, you get far in bracket just by not fucking up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, she doesn't have to take risk at all. That's why it's so annoying for Charlotte's where they're on the health deficit and they need to get the deficit back. And they're like, oh no, now I have to take risk. Like, yeah, you don't have to take risks now. What the hell? <laughs> like, I had to take a risk to get this lead. So now you have to come get it back. And that's why I hate the Charlotte. I hate it so much. Just she's oh, she's such a good character. I she's think she's pretty character. fucking good. She has bad punishment, but She's fucking good. I don't care. She's just like, she's just really good neutral. Has a good DP, good projectile. Bayonet lunge is like a poke that's fucking deflect proof. Got a slide. I mean, you got weak punishment, but so does Tam Tam. But if she, yeah, if she was faster, she would be Yoshi tier scary and neutral. And what I mean by that is the shallow jump characters have this unique way of playing neutral jump where I don't need to respect um, the, the long buttons like Jubei's stand um, B or Charlotte's B or Tam Tam's B where Yoshi can jump outside of that range and have enough time to get the C out 
where on the way down, you're either still in your stand B animation where I hit you and I get a free combo, or you have to take the pressure because your anti air button is not going to come out fast enough to get that out. So Charlotte and Darley also have that same advantage. Unfortunately, Charlotte is the slowest of the three and her run speed just doesn't allow her to do that, unfortunately. But if she did, she'd be probably the best character in the game. Because then she could just run in, jump, see, and punish you and get a big combo. And then just keep you out. Yep. You know? Like, she doesn't even need to play the traditional footsie game where it's like, let me punish this whiff button. Like, she'll just jump over your your you for sticking out buttons out, period. So now you're scared to throw out buttons and she's just coming at you. Like, a, just this wall that you cannot surpass. So It's funny you mention that on, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how you say she can just neutral jump and just see and make shit whiff? Or yeah, like yeah. it's too short and you you will not get an anti air in time. The whole reason I even struggle versus fucking Terrence, I'll approach and he'll neutral jump. And <laughs> I can't run in and Subami Gaichi quick enough because it's too short of a jump. Mm -hmm. And so if he just jumps while I approach, I can't get in range for Subami and do it in time. It's impossible. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's a that's a unique advantage for those short jumpers that a lot of people underestimate and no one really talks about it's buttons in this game recover really slow and that jump is crazy fast it, it, like the the time that button is out and a threat is before you can react to it so that's what makes yoshi's jump c so scary that's what makes darley's jump c so scary and charlotte's it's just the, the short jump coupled with this hitbox is on me before I think it's on me. And I don't have enough time to any area. And they're like, all fucking yeah. C's. <laughs> they're all C's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> that shit sucks. Honestly, I never I never understood the struggle of Ukiyo versus Charlotte. Because I was like, why is space struggling so hard versus the uh, Japanese, oh, that Japanese Charlotte? And after playing Terrence, I'm like, this shit sucks. Because <laughs> everything that I have to do is risky. His punishment is just one button. And while he may not punish hard, he ain't going to fuck it up. And then me punishing him for jumping is three times hard. And he can really just harass me at range. <laughs> like, I can't do yep. too much about it. So frustrating. That's why we told him to. Well, it was Kizzy told him to run Basra against him at Hyperdrive for that tournament because we all knew the struggle Ukyo has against Charlotte, where it's the Charlotte can take those risks because of her high health. Where Ukyo, if he takes that risk, he's gonna risk a lot more. And we're like, dude, just play Bossero and annoy him. You know, hit him with lights for 40 seconds. <laughs> he, he'll eventually open himself up and you'll get a hit. And then she needs to run it back because you need to make the Charlotte player feel uncomfortable and the need to go in. And that's where Bossero shines. You know, you want to make the other player feel like I need to get this back right now. Yeah. And then the, that's when they're going to start running into your stances. That's when you're going to get all the crazy Bossero gimmicks out. Unfortunately space ended up getting in his own head and started to snowball the lead like get greedy with it and it blew him up and that's why he lost it but yeah it's it's funny that you mentioned that he went to ukyo just because that's his that's his character he's a better ukyo player than he is a basura but for that specific matchup against when you're playing against someone you're no longer playing a character versus character you're playing a player versus player yeah you need to play the player at that point and he kind of just fell back on i'm a better ukyo player rather than keeping with basura and saying like i'm just a better player in general and so that unfortunately was the downfall of that storyline but uh yeah it's interesting you brought up the ukyo stroke against charlotte because yeah we agree <laughs> we 100 percent agree <laughs> with that one yeah that's in charlotte's favor for sure it's funny because basara can just like circumvent charlotte Mm -hmm. completely almost because of the ball and like his range but yeah, even, i don't know charlotte. if basara just beats charlotte but i know he no. can just circumvent her like strategy <laughs> for the most part ba yeah basara is not that kind of character 
that's the strange part about him. Like, you can make a matchup list for him, but he'll be able to body you if you're an impatient player. You know? Like, it's just the matchup doesn't work when you're an impatient player. Where you're just running into Bostra's five Cs that'll take that. He only needs to land, what, like three or four and end a whole match? Yeah. Like, it, it's not a matchup based player or a matchup based character, it's a player based character. Yeah, that's what's interesting about that character and why it sometimes works in tournament and sometimes it's just complete trash. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen a Basara win a fucking match. <laughs> tournament. <laughs> oh, I hope one day. I don't want. Right now, the um, including me giving up Tam Tam for Ukyo, the tier list is becoming the tournament tier list is becoming very condensed. Mm. I mean, it's just what is it? Ukyo, Charlotte, Jubei, Yoshitora, Shizu. Yeah. Interesting in love, as much as Yoshitora doesn't get you know talked up a lot. When Yoshitora, like actual Yoshitora players, actually go out to tournaments, like we're getting top eights, <laughs> like yeah, we're for one sure. spot away from top eight. Yeah, and like, you know, so like, well, okay, maybe this character might be good, and like, nah, and just and then everyone tries to play him, and it just doesn't work out. Like, yeah, I suck. <laughs> so that's why you know I have my fingers crossed that this buff is gonna it, it'll push Yoshi in the top five. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. If you guys are looking for a character to look into for the next season, I would look into Yoshi. Because that character might be top 5 if they buff him enough and nerf the rest of the cast. Then he's instantly top 5. Because I doubt they'll nerf him. Just because how vocal the community has been that he sucks. <laughs> You're probably right. We're going to have like a fucking Yoshitora outbreak. <laughs> yeah, that's what, we're, that's what we're thinking. Like, dude, there might be an influx of Yoshitoras coming season two maybe we'll see well yeah yeah i don't know only time will tell if they'll actually buff him if they leave him alone and nerf everyone else he'll still probably be close to top five maybe not break it but he'll definitely be like you know biting at their ankles for sure because right now he's like the bottom of high tier or either the top of mid whichever if you separate top five then he's the bottom of high and if you don't, then he's the top of mid. Because he struggles against the top tier characters, but anyone who isn't top tier, he runs a train on. <laughs> like, yeah. He's he's definitely that dividing line, for sure. Yeah, characters like that are... Uh... <laughs> I feel bad for him, because they're like technically tournament viable, but they're also not, because yeah, eventually you're going to run into your really shitty matchups, eventually, by default. <laughs> Yeah, like my shitty matchups are the popular matchups that people love running, you know, Charlotte, Ukyo. Like, there's no way I'm going to run through a tournament without fighting a Charlotte or an Ukyo. And like, that's my worst matchup. So that it sucks because <laughs> that's the majority. Dude, when I did Road and Rumble, I fought four Shizus in a row. I was like, bro, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you I had mean, to fight that Canadian Shizu too at Lunar Belt. Oh, yeah, Holden. Holden's good. He doesn't understand Yoshi, and that's how I got away with it. But when I play Diddy, he's played me enough where he knows the craziness that Yoshi can get into, and he respects me. I yeah, I don't think you've got. There's no footage of me playing Diddy, right? I don't think. Other so. than that one Ronin, I think there's. So I think I played him in Ronin. I think it got streamed. So you guys catch that. Because it's an interesting style. Because if you watch it, he plays very defensively compared to how he plays against other players. And that's because he respects the power that Yoshi has and the offense that Yoshi has. And like during one of his streams, I was playing him and I, I beat Shizu. And then he was streaming with Romance. And then Romance asked him a question. He's all like, so Yoshi is not talked up a lot. Like, what do you give Yoshi to make him top tier? And then Diddy just kind of just like sat there thinking for a bit. And he's all like, nothing like Yoshi has everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like there's nothing I do to this character. And like that was a validation for me that this character can work at a tournament level. Like when the best US player tells you like that there, this character is actually really good. Like, OK, cool. <laughs> like, I I'm not just crazy. <laughs> like there's, there's actually some validity to what I'm saying here. And I'm, I'm you know, so 
cool. No, that yeah, that was a special moment where I was like, yes, <laughs> I made the best player. <laughs> like, <laughs> believe in this character where everyone else is shitting on him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was cool. <laughs> at least, um, uh. at least you believe in your character. I, I stopped believing in mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't handle. Yeah dodging and not getting SSM or deflecting and not getting SSM. I just couldn't handle it anymore. No, I know what a character sucks, man. I played Vega in Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Like, uh, yeah, I, like, 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 yeah I can't we understand the struggle. We understand what it means to not have a reversal that works and having to deal with everyone's bullshit. I can't believe they made uh, the fucking Barcelona kick. That shit's invincible oh. in like every fucking game he's in except for that one. I know. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe it. What were they thinking? Capcom's just scared of the character. Yeah, I, they I are. I think them. I think they're afraid because ever since ST, I mean, shit. <laughs> yeah, they're they're afraid of ST Vega and they're afraid of CBS Two Vega making a comeback. Because that character on paper would be the best character in a fighting game. Period. Like a character that's quick, that has safe pokes. That can get out and has an anti air, like that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's, it's funny you say that because, like, Alex, when I played Alex in Street Fighter V, I was like, this character has everything. He's got to be gross. But then I was like, why is his knee not invincible? Because I'm like, this is Vega all over again. Like, they just don't deliberately make it good because they're afraid of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. having all these options. Yeah, yeah, they're really afraid of overpowering a character like that. Which is fine if the if the decision is to make this character crazy good and poke, you know, have him be really quick and then have his one weakness be like having a ass anti air. Fine, but just make the part that's supposed to shine like really shine, and then make the part that's supposed to be really awful super awful. I'm cool with that design. The issue is they kind of made the awful part really awful, and they made the good part lukewarm. Yeah, it was like slightly above average. Yeah, and so it was like, uh, it's, all right, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm over it. So yeah, uh, Capcom. I hope they get their shit together for whatever else they're making next. Yeah, me too, man. They can't be trash forever, hopefully. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I hope SNK takes notes too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, give us something good. I I heard that they were thinking of reviving another IP. And that was an interesting, like after KOF, like they're gonna not do another Sam show or another KOF, they're gonna do something completely new. So that's where everyone's getting into talks like, oh, it might be a new Garo, it might be a new Last Blade, it might be a new Metal Slug. So whatever that IP is, I hope they take all the lessons from Sam show seven, they take whatever they learned from KOF 15 and then just keep improving. I, I hope, hope they- This is all they, about they, they learning. Catch up. That's all it yeah, is. I, because I mean, yeah, I just, yeah. they know now. They can't pretend like they don't know what rollback is. <laughs> they can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, shit, man. I, I think the biggest glaring problem is that KOF 14 has multiple players in the same lobby playing at the same time, and Sam Show don't. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how that happens. Like, it's the same <laughs> office. What the fuck? There's no one to <laughs> say, hey, man, you should probably just put that in this game too. Like, what the fuck? Like how did the I, how did the first version of Sam show? Why did it kick us back to the fucking like default lobby instead of letting us oh, sit in line? I completely forgot about that. I'll yeah, you're right. That, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. I don't even know how that got through. It's almost <laughs> like they never played a fucking fighting game before. It's crazy. <laughs> they're just they're so behind on the times. I don't. Yeah. For one, I don't get it, and the second one's like, yeah, you guys were having some financial troubles for a bit there. I get it, you know, you're playing catch up for sure. But now that you have your characters out on every fighting game, everyone's watching you now. It's like, all right, it's time to step it up, like catch up now. Like this is the time to do it. <laughs> yeah. And KO 15 is definitely gonna be the game to watch to see if SNK actually put everything into practice because that's their flagship you know that that's the thing that's supposed to make them crazy money and if that drops the ball oh dude i don't even want to know <laughs> yeah i don't want them to go under i just want them to learn and improve that's all i can ask for them that's it mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. But <laughs> shit, man. Is there anything else you want to talk about before I close? No, I think we covered a pretty good amount. Yeah. <laughs> I feel good about it. <laughs> I feel good about it. <laughs> I'm gonna. Pro- I'm probably gonna. Um, I'm gonna look back at these and hopefully laugh <laughs> when fucking <laughs> Samurai Showdown Eight comes out and it's got fucking oh, rollback. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that, dude. <laughs> SK, please make me eat my words. Please make me look bad. Like yeah, that's. I want to be uh, wrong. Yeah, exactly. I really do want to be wrong, but unfortunately, this is. Through the actions that you guys are doing like this is my thoughts right now you know i just a lot of my faith is not there and that's not because of uh i don't love the game it's because it's just there's no improvement and there's no information getting sent to us that you guys are actually actively working on it you know so yeah yeah that, that, that's that <laughs> that's that <laughs> <laughs> yeah but all right, guys. It was nice talking. It was nice talking to Goro here. And uh, you know, if you want to follow Goro on Twitter, you know, you can hit him up on Twitter. It's uh, sc at sc Goro. You can uh, follow me on Twitch. You can follow me on my Twitter. And hopefully, uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. I'll catch you next week. I forgot. I'm taking a. I'm not gonna do two a week anymore. But I'll catch you next week, next Wednesday, with another guest. I haven't got that one lined up, so I'll let y'all know as soon as I get done with it. Peace.